Hey everybody, happy holidays if you're watching this when it's new. Yesterday was Christmas. Today I did a little bit of post-Christmas shopping at Target. But just prior to Christmas, we hit an estate sale, which was a really big surprise to me that there even was estate sales um, the weekend before Christmas. But there was. And as you can see from this picture here, um, we bought primarily one item, which was, mm, I'm going to say old model kits. Kind of. And I wish, I sincerely wish, if each of these boxes was a mint in the box model kit, an untouched, unbuilt model kit, um, there would be, oh, gosh, probably $500 sitting on this desk. Um, sadly, that's not the case. Every one of these boxes was cracked into what basically what there was was a large uh, trunk, like a uh, like a little footlocker, with open boxes of just pieces from all kinds of model kits. So clearly they were started kits or kits that he customized and these were the leftover pieces. There were models spread all over the house and I probably should have just picked up every piece of model building stuff I found around the house because together I might have had a better kit but it didn't work out that way and I didn't want to spend that much money on what might have been a um, folly. But what really pulled me in was this right here which is um, Ed Roth's uh, Big Daddy. So this is part of that sort of Ratfink line. Um, here's Ratfink back here. Let me see if I can get a little closer for you. If you are a child of the 60s or 70s, you should know Ratfink. Ed Roth was the master uh, builder of like um, custom hot rods and things like that, which was not only popular here in California, I mean, it really was a huge thing, and he was really big. Uh, and then Radfink made it out past the hot rod crowd into just pop culture. He, he ended up on t-shirts and coffee mugs, and if you would go to the, remember the bubblegum machines? I think they still have those. You put in your nickel, and you would get little plastic versions of Radfink. You could collect them in all kinds of sizes and colors. They were kind of like, sort of like troll dolls were. Um, the little baby ones, like around that size. And I had lots of them. My dad was a model builder though too, so I'm sure we had some of these Rat Fink models around the house. Um, this is Ravel, which again was one of the great model kit companies of the probably 50s and 60s, maybe even going back to the 1940s, but certainly in their heyday in the 50s and 60s. So um, this was the thinking, was that because model building, um, isn't as hot as it used to be, but these old kits and people use them either again for nostalgia or they use them to customize items that they're making now, what they call kit bashing. And this particular kit has been reissued more recently, so you can get this kit as a reissue. If this one was new in its box, it would be worth several hundred dollars. Um, the box art is slightly different, especially in the coloration on the modern one. So it's easy to tell the difference when you compare them online. So I thought if nothing else, I thought this box alone, which is in pretty good shape, would be worth the price of admission, as they say. Now on old model kits, again, don't assume just because they are open or partially used that they're worthless. There's still some value in them, obviously not as much. I've already said that. Um, here's a, another case of it's a shame. So old uh, instructions for model kits, particularly old Aurora monster model kits, have value by themselves. Now this one has been packed in a way that you can see it's got a really huge stain on it, which is kind of a shame. Um, so this actually was an extra. He must have had two of these kits because this was an extra piece in there. And then speaking of Aurora, look at this one. So this was uh, an old Aurora model kit. They had huge instructions, but again, sadly, this one's got some um, paint, the paint bottles were rested on it, which, you know, we did. Um, but it might still have some value. People have been selling these on their own. Um, that paint's probably gonna make it not that worthwhile. I'm probably gonna end up including it with one of the other kits. Um, sadly, there are no actual Aurora kits here. So um, in everything I got, even if nothing sells, I found one thing in this set that will definitely pay me back for what I paid. I paid in total about $15, I think, for everything we got here, including a beautiful cane. I don't remember if I showed that to you guys, because I think I just got that. Gorgeous, yes, cane, as in like, you know, walk, walker, cane, gorgeous. Um, so this box sort of was my catch-all. Sorry to repeat myself. The 
these other boxes were all open and I have since tried to clean them out and get the biggest pieces in the correct boxes, but they're, like I said, far from complete. And this was sort of the leftover set. This is instructions. So this club coop, oh look, trophy series. Oh, I keep forgetting, I meant to see that. Sorry for the shake. Look at this tiny, can you even see it? Tiny, tiny little trophy that I found in the bottom of the box. And I'm thinking, gosh, that's gotta be worth something all by itself. So it clearly came with this set. So AMT, another really great model kit company, made this series of three-in-one customizing kits. And what they are is a base car with a variety of different customized pieces that you can use to make different types of cars from the era. So this was a 1940 Ford. We have a 1961, love it, 1949 Ford Club Coupe. So this instruction goes with that, but I think, for, again, for some reason, I had two sets of these, which is why this one's out of the box. Um, this is the real thing. Oh, look, and then there was a 1925 Model T version. Again, it's that same version. I did not find the box for that one, so this is by itself. Um, gosh, what did I just do with that little, oh, these things are so tiny. So these, um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is taking all of these here. Look at this one. Wow, wow, wow. Double dragster three-in-one kit. Is that amazing? So I'm probably going to take all of these extra instruction sets and sell them as a lot on their own. I think somebody's going to want them. 1929, and then there's some general paperwork. Um, the only thing left recognizable at all in the Ratfink set is this Ratfink, which if you're going to find anything, that's pretty cool. Um, all the bits of the car are really gone, and I think this engine might have been from it. Um, so I'm probably just going to sell this box with the Ratfink, and, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, maybe the little trophy, we'll see. But um, what I did find, gosh, I'm distractible today. Sorry, I think my I still have holiday brain, was this set of decals. Now, old decals can be worth quite a bit of money because, again, there's something that's normally destroyed once kids have played with the kits or they just get ma mangled up. Now you can see these. this one in particular has been cut, but there's still quite a bit left on here that makes it worthwhile. Now, apparently what this set was, let me find a better one that I really love. Here's one was a set um, that came with, um, that were Chuck Barris customizing kit. And you would get a pack of these. Now somebody has a set of these 12 sheets uncut up for something like crazy, like $75 um, right now on eBay. So there's definitely some value in them. Look at this one, Sid's Auto Parts. The one he has has like record, a record shop, which is really cool. No go. That's a fun one. And then 1968, some super flames for your car. Motor City. Wait, I didn't find my other one. There's another one I really like. Where is it? Am I missing it? I do like that devil. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been getting over being sick, too. Hmm. I feel like I lost one or I put it aside somewhere. I don't know. I'll find it. Anyway, so... Um, I'm going to just, because they are cut in two and all of that, I'm probably just going to put these on auction as one big set. And like I said, I paid 15 for everything. If I can't get 15 alone just for these, I would be very surprised. So I should said get my money back on those alone. Okay, so up here. All right, there's that one. Um, so these other cars, so Ed Roth was the hot rod guy. But I can find it on here. I know it's on one of these. It says Barris Custom Crop. Look at those. I love that era of cars. Um, and somewhere, and now of course I can't find it. I, maybe it was just on the customizing pieces that it had the name of uh, George Barris. Now George Barris is the guy who did the famous, some of the most famous cars you've ever seen on on TV from the Batmobile to the Monkeymobile and pretty much any crazy, <coughs> excuse me, the Adams Family car. 
or Munster's car. Any crazy car you saw. Oh, there we go. Anyway, I saw it somewhere. George Barris, King of the Customizer. So that's why the point was of these custom kits. So it came with the base car and then it came with all these different custom options so you could make your car really special and different than anybody else who got their model kit. Um, some very, very tiny little parts, like tiny little headlines, lights, and, and tailpipes. Um, and I think that the Barris name certainly will help. So this this is a really unusual body shape on that. There's like a piece, here's the bottom of a car. Um, this one was the one that was the most just random parts. And then these two I was able to get a little closer. But again, I'm gonna make it really clear to anyone who buys these. But again, look at the art on the boxes. The art is super, and the boxes are in pretty good shape overall. Here we go again. Here's the custom parts and accessories that you get. Oh, look, there's that piece that I saw in the other one. AMT Authentic Detail. Yeah, I don't know. I might have to sell these all together because of the pieces. So this one, I do have a big chunk of the car right here. Big, big chunk. And otherwise... It's just a box full of bits again and the instructions on that one let's see now that I'm looking at the side better here I see I do have that piece I've seen some of these pieces and all the other ones I have I don't know what do you guys think should I sell all three of these custom car boxes as one lot maybe I should huh just be simpler um, so this is the box that's in the least, um, sh the shape's not great on this one. And again, check out some of the great stock options and custom things. So you can see this one's a little bit messed up here. <coughs> oh, and there's a duplicate of that. But I do have on this one, again, a good section of the car, a lot of the car on that one. And this actually, I think, goes inside. I think, yes, yeah, so this should go in there. That's the windows for the car. And then tires and just a whole container full of tiny little chrome bits and wheel rims and all that. Um, so that's my decision and we're going to figure that out um, very shortly whether or not we want to put these as one big lot or try to separate them. And then this kit we think pretty much is intact. This is the USS New Jersey, which was a ship that was um, decommissioned and in port in New Jersey the last time I had visited with my husband and son when my son was quite little. In Camden Shipyards, I believe, and my husband went to see it, so he wanted this one. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of value on its own, but again, we mostly couldn't leave it behind because of that. And then these are in the boxes, or, well, this box is in really awful shape. Um, this one's a little bit better. So these are Ravel model kits of the very old planes. Once again, this is the highlight. We do have the original decals in here, which is super duper. And then you can tell this one hasn't, he really hasn't built this. So I can't, still cannot go in and say that nothing's missing for sure because it's just too difficult, especially the instructions are missing. So it's too hard to tell if any piece is missing, but you can tell that the majority of the plane is here. So these two, especially because the other box is in awful shape, um, I am going to list these together. I'm going to be on these. I'll be happy to get t clear $20 with some shipping on top for these. Um, the other model kits, I should easily get the 20, if not more. Um, the real wild card on those is somebody who looks at them and knows that there's a lot more in those boxes that they could really use than I know. Because again, it's too hard for me to tell what parts are missing and what are. So there's those. Uh, let me just move this model kit bag so I don't end up dropping it. That would be really bad. And then um, I got a few odds and ends that... I'm a sucker for tiny things, and I shouldn't buy this stuff, but I always do, and then I always go, what am I going to do with it? Let's see if I can give you a better angle here. Um, so first of all, with some patches, um, I couldn't resist this, Gale Builders or Copycats, so the gentleman whose house we were at was 
obviously a model builder and he built uh, radio control car radio control planes and was part of a scale modeling club um, my husband is the president of a local modeling club but not this club which we thought was pretty funny um, this isn't it so I'm pointing to it like this is it there were patches from the club I didn't pick them up because they were a little too specific but I did like this one I thought this was a very cool patch um, this becomes that issue that a lot of you bears talk about which is what it's going to take to list these um, they'll sell I'm sure but because you to track them on eBay you've got to put them in a envelope that's two dollars and seventy cents and so that means you've got to charge at least five to nine and then you know is it worth the effort and time to make you know maybe 50 cents or so on this item um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm going to look it up and see if anyone sold anything like it. Or, again, I might just put these patches together thinking that somebody who likes airplanes will like this. But even if you don't like airplanes specifically or on a model builder, these would look cool in a jacket. Um, I also grabbed this. Now, it's funny. He had this for a different reason. Me and my RC. He had this because he was an RC radio control builder. But this is actually a patch from the old RC Cola. Um, the competitor to Coca-Cola and a Pepsi-Cola. I don't know if they still make RC. Um, it's big in the South, big on the East Coast when I was a kid. Um, incredibly, there are tons of these up on eBay. And they do have a little bit of value, but um, for me, again, it might be better off getting a whole lot of patches together and selling them that way. Um, we'll see. Um, I also just grabbed this while I was there. This is Disneyland's Thumper's Easter Egg Hunt. I find a lot of these again because I live in Southern California because I a lot of locals go to these events. These are the special event pins that they give out. Um, they may have like breakfast ones and ones for special visits with characters that you get to wear to signify that you paid to take part in a particular event. Um, and I've never seen this one before. So again, I don't know if it has any value on its own, but I always come up with a lot of these and I gen generally just tend to lot them together after a while. Back of it's a little icky, but whatever. Um, this is just stupid. <laughs> there were some clothes and I was going to grab them all and I think I forgot <laughs> to grab them all. And I ended up with these couple little pieces. Um, this is like a little doll, like, backpacky thing. I don't know if somebody made it or what, but again, I'll probably just hang on to it for when I have a lot of doll clothes. And then these, I don't think these are homemade. I think these are pants for some probably it would be again 1970s, early 1970s toy um, <coughs> doll. Not a Barbie. It would be more like a Mego um, size, I think. Maybe Sunshine Family. I have them. Um, again, Excuse me, this just ended up in my bag, so they'll just go into my, so I have a lot of doll clothes. I actually have dolls that those might fit, which if somebody buys them, I'll throw it in there. Um, this is another tiny that I just grabbed for who knows why. I think it's actually a Manchichi. If it's not, it's a Manchichi ripoff. It's got a little bell on its tail. It's got this weird little pin, so it was designed to hook into, you know, your, your backpack or something, or as a, wear as a pin. <coughs> I know you're getting tired of me coughing. I'm going to finish up right now. And then this I couldn't resist because this reminded me of the 70s when I was a kid, the late 60s. Um, oh, I cannot remember that. Wait, hey, wait, wait. It says here. I'm going to get my glasses on. Oh, yeah. Originals by Ermi. Someday I'm going to get a camera that focuses. So I-R-M-I uh, from something plastics can't read it nursery plastics so this was part of a line of nursery items of uh, kids nursery not garden nursery uh, what you will see most often are switch plates for the wall and mobiles um, crib mobiles that have these little wooden characters hanging off of them and they all have the same sort of stylized look they're all in this kind of color pattern color which was very popular in the 70s which is kind of weird now because it's the screen is sort of neither here nor there it's bright but it's not really bright it's very earthy with the oranges and browns um, this one was a night light um, I'm probably not gonna plug it in I don't know if there's any danger in doing so, but I don't know. It's really old, and I don't know, probably couldn't hurt anything plugging it in, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> so his obviously his little tummy would light up. 
I don't know if he has any real value there. There are some people do buy the nursery items that come with this, either out of their own nostalgia or I don't know, maybe they're buying them as props for things. I have no idea. But I have not seen any of this particular piece from the line. So um, somebody who has the mobile and the wall switch will want him. And they'll test him and plug him in and see if he works. And yes, definitely I would make more money if I found out if he worked. Um, I don't know what I'm really afraid of. I blow in a circuit or something because it's all weird. I don't know. Probably ask my husband about it. So that is what I have to show you all. Um, let me think a second. Yes, I still have a big lot of transformers I haven't shown you guys. And hold your heads a minute. I'm going to flip you around. Ooh, hello. Let's take a look over there at the tree while I finish talking. Am I chick fil drink? Move that out of the way. Um, so we, yes, we had a lovely Christmas yesterday. I got a Ghostbusters puzzle and some super DVDs. And I'm thinking about for the new year, actually doing some DVD reviews on my other channel. I have so many DVDs. I love TV on DVD especially. So that I think might be my project for the new year. But that's what I've got right now. Did you go and get any thrifting done? Or maybe you found some great items to resell from the after Christmas sales, I didn't. I found some other goodies for the household, but I didn't find anything worth reselling. Uh, I would love to hear about it. So thanks for checking out my haul. And here's hoping that we're all going to have a really super new year on eBay. <laughs>